Mary Mead and welcome. Welcome to the realms of mysticism, the occult, and magic, where your possibilities are only limited by your imagination. Welcome to the Witch's Cauldron and discover the knowledge you seek. Gather round the cauldron and even stay for a spell. Brightest blessings to you. Merry meet and welcome to the Witch's Cauldron. My name's Paula. First off, if you hear some chomping in the background, my puppy is playing with an elk antler. She's happy. I'm not going to stop her from playing just to record. So if you hear some crunching in the background, it's because the pups. Okay, today is one in my series on deity spotlights and this one is on the Morrigan. Uh, the Morrigan is of Irish origin. She is a goddess of birth, death, sex, destruction, uh, fertility, war, battle. She is also associated with Ireland's sovereignty and well-being. So she is one of the key deities in Irish mythology and culture with regard to the well-being and sovereignty of Ireland. Sometimes, now depending on who you are, how you treat her, how you see things, sometimes she is considered to be a single entity or spirit. Sometimes she is often referred to as a triple goddess. In other words, three manifestations in one. Other times, many believe that she is a triad of three separate goddesses. Those goddesses being Bav, Nevan, and Macha. Those three goddesses, Bav, Nevan, and Macha, I will go over in separate deity spotlights. What I'm focusing on right now are all of the energy, some of the mythology, and how um, the Morrigan can manifest. The Morrigan is, the, is most well known as a war goddess. She may instigate a battle, she may interfere in one. She is the one who determines a war's outcome by bestowing victory to whichever army she decides to favor. Now, what happens is she has a frenzied war fury that unnerves armies. Her shriek is deadly. The Morgan is, in her mythology, renowned for giving very sound battle advice. She advised the Dagda, who is um, one of the members of the Dua de Danan, how to deal with the Fomorians, okay, who were like the giants in um, Irish mythology. But the Morrigan doesn't just involve herself in war and things of that, or battle, things of that nature. Remember that the Morrigan is not just a war goddess, okay? She will involve herself in anything that tickles her fancy. Anything that she that piques her interest, she will interject herself in. Um, she is a goddess of life as well as battle and death. She is a goddess of birth and of sex. Sometimes some parts of uh, legends identify her as a mermaid. Um, but the one thing that you need to kind of remember in the Morgan's mythology, it comes on Samhain. Um, now, Samhain is the beginning of the Celtic dark half of the year, okay? And during this time, the Morgan stands astride a river, one foot on, you know, either side of the banks of the river, and then 
this is a symbolism with the river, her being astride the river of the great right. Okay, this is a symbology of sacred transformative ritual sex with the Dagda, who is Ireland's all father. He's like uh, the equivalent of Odin in the Norse pantheon. Okay, now in her manifestations, the Morgan can come to you in, and manifest in several different ways. She can come as a beautiful woman. She can come as a hag. She can manifest as a crow. She can come in as a deer. And she can either be a doe or a stag. So don't just think, you know, that because the Morrigan is a female deity that she will not pop in as a stag, okay? Uh, she can also present herself as a white heifer uh, with red ears and no horns. She can also manifest as a black eel that is long enough to coil three times around the legs of Kuhalan, okay, who was of the giants, okay, he was a giant man. Now let's go over some of the Morrigan's correspondences. That is a very brief mythology and some of the ways that the Morrigan can manifest to you. And I will say this, that usually the Morrigan is the one who will come to you. Um, she rarely answers someone's call if she doesn't really find them interesting. Okay, so usually when the Morrigan pops in, um, it's because she's found you interesting and she will answer you. Um, but usually she will be the first one to initiate because she's deemed you worthy. Um, she's uh, rather particular about who she works with. So working with the Morrigan is not going to be for everyone. Okay, now let's go over some of the Morrigan's correspondences. As I said, she is often considered a triple goddess um, of war, battle, death, and destruction. Um, also, life, birth, and sex, okay? The zodiac sign affiliated with her is Aries. The solar system is the planet Pluto. Moon phases are the new and the waning moon. Celebrations are New Year's Day and Maybon, also Samhain. Colors are black and red. Trees are the aspen, cherry, juniper, locust, oak, and willow. Herb and garden are the honeysuckle. Miscellaneous plants are henbane and reeds. Gemstones and minerals are red agates, bloodstone, obsidian, onyx, and ruby. With me, she likes an offering of onyx. That's just my personal experience. Um, metal, her metals are iron and steel. Birds are the crane, the crow, and the raven. Animals are dogs, specifically black dogs, cattle, horse, and the wolf. Magical are fairies or the fae. Her intents and powers are action, banishing, war, and war in general, and specifically battlefields. Courage, death, deceit, defense, destiny, destruction, empowerment, enmity, favors, fear, hexes, influence, magic in general, crone magic, night magic, and sex magic. Messages and omens, nightmares, 
power, prophecy, protection, revenge, sex and sexuality, shamanic work, strength, witches, and witchcraft. So there we have it. As I said, you can pull from those correspondences and um, set up an altar, make offerings to her. Um, this time of year, I don't know where you are, we still have some honeysuckle hanging around. You could make an offering to her um, or dry some and have it, save it for Mabon and Samhain uh, to give an offering to her then. But as I said, if you call to the Morrigan, don't be surprised if she does not answer, okay? So, because she is one of what I will call, um, I don't want to say fickle because it's got such a negative connotation. She's very choosy who she wants to work with and who she allows um, to call on her and to call on those energies. And, you know, unless she feels that you are worthy or you pique her interest in some way, she may not answer the call for you. Um, so, there is one book that I have read on the Morrigan that is worth your while. That one book is this one right here, okay? It's called The Feast of the Morrigan. It's by uh, Christopher Penzak. This is the only book that I have read on the Morrigan that I can honestly recommend. And, you know, if you've ever read one of uh, Christopher Penzak's, like, uh, Temple of Books, um, then you know he's got a particular writing style. Some people don't like his writing style. I'm okay with it. Um, but I have found that this book, uh, Feast of the Morrigan was really good um, and it was worth me keeping in my library because if I don't feel like a book is worth my time then um, I pass it on or I donate it to my uh, coven's my HP shop that she runs and she sells them as used books and so then the proceeds go to help run the school so with that my friends Merry we did meet, merry we will part until we merry meet again. Be well and walk in love and light, everybody. Bye.